What's up, y'all? Welcome back to Kelsey's Corner. I'm Kelsey. I have a Quaker parrot named Charlie, a dog named Diesel, 13 ball pythons, and a boa named Phoenix. I'm an aspiring ball python breeder, and I make videos about how to take care of snakes, birds, and maybe some fun stuff along the way. If you haven't seen my other videos yet, I made a video about how to choose a breeder and how to choose a healthy snake. But before you bring it home, you want to make sure that your enclosure is set up 100% so your snake can feel comfortable from day one. There's a good chance if you're watching this video that you just got your first snake. If so, congratulations! Choosing the type of enclosure you're going to keep your snake in is obviously the first step. Most people go for a glass terrarium aquarium type enclosure. This is a great option if you're keeping your snake just as a pet. There's three main types of enclosures that people keep their snakes in. One, and probably the most popular, is the glass aquarium terrarium type enclosure. That's what I have Phoenix, my boa, in. It's a front opening sliding glass enclosure which is great because it allows easy access. Another type of glass enclosure you may see opens from the top or it may have two screen panels like this one does. So this one is kind of like a hybrid glass enclosure. If you decide you want to go with a glass aquarium, make sure that whatever type you get has a good locking mechanism, especially if you're going to be keeping ball pythons. Ball pythons are escape artists and they will get out if there's any possible way for them to. If you're getting a glass enclosure that's an aquarium type that doesn't come with locks on it already and you're putting your own screen top onto it, make sure you get the locking clips. If you only have one or two snakes, a glass enclosure is a great option. However, if you plan on building your collection and having a lot of different snakes or a lot of different kinds of animals, glass enclosures take up a lot of space and they're very difficult to clean. That's why I only have one. My boa is probably going to get to be 8 to 10 feet long, so I just went ahead and I got her the cage that she's going to need once she's full grown. If you plan on using a glass enclosure, especially for a ball python, make sure it's the correct size for the size of the snake or make sure you provide them lots of hiding places. They don't like to be in the open. Another type of enclosure is just a plastic bin. If you choose to go this route, make sure you drill holes in the side and make sure the lid is a locking lid. Ball pythons are very strong and they will get out of it if it's not locked securely. The advantage to keeping them in a plastic bin is going to be it's a lot easier to clean than a glass enclosure. The third most popular type of enclosure is going to be a rack. That's what I have behind me here. They have plastic bins that either sit directly on the PVC itself or they might be aligned onto a PVC track that keeps them slightly above the shelf. Both of mine this one has a track on the side you might be able to see it here um, there's a little lip here where the plastic bin sits and then it's a, it's off of the actual shelving of the PVC but it keeps it flush to the top so they can't get out and then my other one sits directly in the shelf and the bins fit perfectly. Once you choose the type of enclosure you're going to keep your snake in, the next step is to figure out what kind of substrate you're going to use. The most popular substrate that really holds humidity well is going to be coconut husk. There's a few different brands that you can use. One of them is Cocoa Blocks, another is Reptichip. I personally use Eco Earth. They usually come in dehydrated bricks, so you soak them in water and they expand and they usually cover quite a lot of space. Eco Earth comes with three dehydrated bricks per pack. It takes two dehydrated bricks once they've expanded to fill a 75 gallon tank. For my plastic bins in my rack, one brick goes pretty far. Another option for substrate is Aspen. The reason I don't recommend Aspen is it doesn't hold humidity quite as well. If you have a lot of snakes, another great option is to use paper towel or newspaper. I use a combination of both in my racks for my babies or my newer snakes that I'm trying to monitor. Once my new snakes get out of quarantine, I use a combination of newspaper and paper towels to help monitor their poops. The downside to using paper towels and newspaper is it is harder to keep up the humidity, so you want to make sure you have a water spray bottle to spray in there every day and make sure that the humidity is correct. There are a few types of bedding that you want to make sure you stay away from. One of them is sand. Some people think that if they get a Kenyan sand boa, that the sand boa needs to have sand as a substrate because that's where they live in the wild. Sand is not a very good substrate for a snake, especially if you feed them in their enclosure. If they ingest any of it, it's very bad for them. Another type of substrate that you don't want to use is going to be cypress, pine, or cedar. Some people do use cypress, but over time it can harm your snake. Cedar and pine are definite no-go. Something else that you want to be careful of is getting mulch from the hardware store. If you choose to use mulch from the hardware store as a substrate for your snakes, make sure you bake it properly. You can find resources online about temperatures and times for different types of mulch. I don't recommend doing that. There can be a lot of different toxins or pests mites, anything like that that you're bringing into your home, possibly introducing to your snakes. 
So while that is a cheaper option, I don't recommend it. It's better to spend the money and make sure you're taking care of your snakes properly. Once you've chosen the substrate that you want to use, the next step is to pick some things to go inside the enclosure. The most important thing, especially if you have a ball python, is going to be a hide. It's important that they have a place where they can retreat to that's dark and enclosed and they feel safe and secure. The hide needs to be about the same size as them when they're balled up. That's going to help them feel the most safe. Another type of hide that could be a good option for you is a humidity hide. This is going to be a place where they can retreat to if they're in shed and they're having a hard time. They can go in there and it's really going to help them get that moisture they need to get their shed off in one piece. The next step is to make sure you have a proper heating element. Snakes are cold-blooded, which means they can't regulate their own body temperature. They rely on the outside environment to regulate that for them. No matter what kind of snake you have, you need to have a warm side and you need to have a cool side. For ball pythons, specifically you want your warm side to be anywhere from 85 to 90 degrees. For the cool side you want it to be anywhere from 74 to 76 degrees. The most common way that people use to heat their tanks is going to be an under the tank heat mat. This is a heating pad that has a sticky film on it going to stick to the bottom of your tank. If you choose to use an under the tank heat mat, make sure you get a thermostat. I'm going to put her back because she's getting a little irritated with me and I'll show you exactly what I mean. A thermostat is crucial because heating pads can get up to 125 degrees Fahrenheit. Remember I said that the hot side needs to be between 88 and 90 degrees for a ball python. So a thermostat is going to keep your heating pad from reaching those temperatures. A thermal burn is something that can occur if the heating pad is too hot and if you don't have enough substrate covering it. A thermal burn is no joke. It can seriously injure your snake and possibly kill them, especially if they're small. This is a thermostat that you can use to plug into your heating pads. You can choose the temperature and it will regulate it for you. You plug your heating element directly into the thermostat and then you use this probe directly on the heat mat to keep it from going above your desired temperature. So you put this on the actual heat mat itself. That way the heat mat never gets above whatever you set it at, in our case 90 degrees. And then you plug this directly into your surge protector. Another heating element you can use is a heat lamp. For ball pythons, a UVA UVB light is not necessary. Like I said earlier, they mainly live underground or in small, dark, enclosed spaces. So it's not like a bearded dragon or a lizard or something like that that needs that UVA UVB light to be healthy. But a heat lamp can be an awesome addition for an arboreal species of snake that prefers to sit near the top of their cage. Another optional element for your snake's enclosure could be some sphagnum moss. Some people use sphagnum moss as a boost for their humidity. To make sure that your temperatures and your humidity are correct, make sure you have some sort of gauge in your snake's enclosure, preferably one on the hot side and one on the cool side. That's going to help you manage your temperatures. If you're able to drop the money, they do have laser thermometers that you can point directly at a certain spot in your cage and see exactly how hot each spot is. If your snake is not arboreal, some optional things you can add to your tank would be logs, branches, some decorative leaves, things like that. If you choose to use a heat lamp for your snake, a great tool to have is a timer like this. You plug the lamp directly into it, you use these little black tabs to choose the time that you want the lamp to be on and turn off, and it'll do it automatically for you. Zoomed, who makes this timer, also makes a timer that looks just like this, but it has two plugins. So after I finished the last video, I actually found my day and night timer. I thought I had one, but I couldn't remember where I put it. So it does have the day time plug and the night time plug, and then you use these little tabs to choose which um, light you want to come on at what time. Um, and then it has the switch on the side where you can just have it on all the time or you can have it set on the timer. Now the cool thing about this timer is um, if you only plug something into one, then it'll act just like the other one. So this one's more dual purpose. You can use it both ways. If you only have something plugged into the daytime, then when it goes off and switches to nighttime, if there's nothing plugged in, nothing's going to happen. So that's kind of a perk of having one like this as well. Okay, back to the video. Last but not least, make sure your snake has access to water. Make sure the bowl's big enough that they can get all the way inside it if they want to or if they need to. Some snakes like to soak and some actually need it to help with their shedding process. Once you've got everything on your list checked off, you should be all set to put your snake directly into their enclosure once you bring them home. Once you bring your new snake home, leave them in their enclosure for a week or two without really bothering them. It's going to be tempting to get them out and hold them and play with them, especially if it's your first one, but make sure they have adequate time to get used to their new surroundings. Changing a snake's surroundings is very stressful for them. If you haven't checked out my other video on how to choose a breeder and how to choose a healthy snake, I'll link it up here somewhere, so go check it out. 
as always, thanks for watching. If you love snakes, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Comment down below any new content you'd like to see. Like this video. I come out with new videos every single week. Make sure you follow us on Instagram. It's Kelsey's Corner Friends, and I'll see y'all next time.